Hi everybody, Vanquished Angel here, and today's video is going to be on Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron's movie, where Ray Comfort, if you don't know who he is, he runs around preaching this thing with a banana and a soda can as proof that God exists. And so we're going to be watching a little bit of the video today, and we're going to be seeing if we can find proof that God exists. I've since learned that when you really look at the evidence, the truth is it takes more faith to be an atheist than it does to believe in God. You've really got to ignore the facts. Well, it's funny how we equate the word atheism with intellectual. Yeah. It's the exact opposite. That's right. Because I have an, uh, an intellectually stimulating theory. It's my theory of where the soda can may have come from. Billions of years ago, there was a big bang in space. Nobody knows what caused the big bang. It just happened. And from this bang issued this huge rock. On top of the rock was found a sweet brown bubbly substance. And over millions of years, aluminum crept up the side, formed itself in a can, then a lid, and then a tan. And then millions of years later, red paint, blue paint, white paint fell from the sky and formed itself into the words, 12 fluid ounces, do not litter. You say, what are you doing? You're insulting my intellect. And so I am. Because we know if the, if the can is made, there must be a maker. If it's designed, there must be a designer. To believe the soda can happened by chance is to move into an intellectual free zone. It's to have an echo when you think. It's to have brain liposuction. So essentially the logic here is that because the can is intelligently designed, and we know it's designed by man, therefore that can must have a designer, meaning the can is evidence that there is a designer, which, you know, is is somewhat of a logical uh, example. However, the the flaw in that is essentially you're arguing uh, the argument of intelligent design, which, you know, is, is a decent argument in and of itself, but the problem is, is that meaning that if something was intelligently designed or is intelligent or fits the function, then therefore it must have a designer. The question then comes to fit who designed God. And that's where the flaw comes in. You're saying that humans are so intelligent, intelligently designed, that therefore, because of human intelligence, essentially, they must have had a designer. That means, A, if God is intelligent, then therefore God must have a designer as well. So that's kind of the flaw in that. Um, but, as a good example of what you're saying, though, and, and how it's wrong, is that humans have adapted the material of a can to suit their needs. And that's where this gets pivotal to your atheist nightmare. Humans made that sweet substance according to what humans desire, the bubbly substance inside. And humans colored the can according to colors that appeal to humans. Hold this, Kurt. Behold the atheist's nightmare. Now, if you study a well-made banana, you'll find on the far side there are three ridges. On the close side, two ridges. If you get your hand ready to grip a banana, you'll find on the far side there are three grooves, on the close side two grooves. Oh crap. I need a banana. Where? 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 Um, got one. Three grooves on the close side two grooves. The banana and the hand are perfectly made one for the other. You'll find the maker of the banana, Almighty God, has made it with a non-slip Surface. Oh my God! It has outward indicators of inward contents: green, too early; yellow, just right; black, too late. Now, if you go to the top of the banana, you'll find, as with the soda can makers, a place to tab at the top. So God has placed a tab at the top. A tab. When you pull the tab, and the contents don't squirt in your face. Well, you'll you find the wrapper, right, which is biodegradable, has perforations. Notice how gracefully it sits over the human hand. Notice it has graceful. a point at the top for ease of entry. It's just the right shape for the human mouth. It's chewy, easy to digest, and it's even curved toward the face to make the whole process so much easier. Seriously, Kurt, the whole of creation testifies to the genius of God's creative power. Oh, it absolutely does. It's God exists. The, the problem with using the banana as the example of proof of God is that mankind has measurably changed the banana to suit mankind. Bananas did not look like what they do today, you know, a few hundred years ago. Mankind through farming changed them 
so the seeds used to be bigger, there used to be less fruit in there, on and so forth, things were very different. They were more closer to a plantain than they are to their current state of a banana today. So actually, your example of a banana being evidence of God is actually evidence of evolution. As the banana has changed to suit how humanity has altered it, how humanity has grown it and by natural selection or by selecting the bananas that we wanted or liked better to plant actually changed their evolutionary process and us humans can do this well in the history we did this you know over a span of just maybe a hundred years or so we could alter pretty much anything but today we can now do it genetically so your example of a banana is a little shot uh, it has 40,000 nerve endings and focusing muscles that move more than 100,000 times a day. The human eye has over 137 million light-sensitive cells. And even Charles Darwin himself said, To suppose that the eye could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. So even the, uh, the uh, creator of the theory of evolution says it just goes against my common sense and logic. Actually, that is not at all what he said because the quote is taken out of context and butchered and ripped apart and reformed and is not actually even a quote from Charles Darwin. The actual quote is, suppose that the eye with all its imitable contrivances for adjusting the focus to different distances, for admitting different amounts of light, and for the correction of spherical and chromatic aberration could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. When it was first said that the sun stood still and the world turned round, the common sense of mankind declared the doctrine false. But the old saying of Vox Populi, Vox Dei, as every philosopher knows, cannot be trusted in science. Reason tells me that if numerous gradations from a simple and imperfect eye to one complex and perfect can be shown to exist, each grade being useful to its possessor, as is certainly the case. If further the eye ever varies and the variation be inherited, as is likewise certainly the case, and if such variations should be useful to any animal under changing conditions of life, then the di difficulty of believing that a perfect and complex eye could be formed by natural selection, though insuperable by our imagination, should not be considered as subversive of the theory. How a nerve comes to be sensitive to light hardly concerns us more than how life itself originated, but, it, but I may remark that, as some of the lowest organisms, in which nerves cannot be detected are capable of perceiving light, it does not seem impossible that certain sensitive elements in their SAR code could become aggregated and developed into nerves, endowed with this special sensibility. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that atheist nightmare thing. It, it didn't really convince me, or did it? But... Anyway, alright, thanks for watching, and have a good day.